Hi folks, in this video we're going to learn about something called the discriminant, and I'll underline the word there. The discriminant, you'll notice that it looks a lot like, um, recently I've done, I've done videos on the quadratic formula, and in the quadratic formula there's one section that's underneath the square root sign, or the radical sign, that looks like this. Okay, now if you've I'm sure you have. If you've seen the quadratic formula, you'll remember this part, okay? And um, basically, what we're going to use today is just this part that I'm outlining in green. We're not going to include the radical, really. We're just going to think about this part right here. And the cool thing is, well, when a radical sign has a negative under it, okay, it's impossible. You can't take the negative square root of something unless you use something called imaginary numbers, but that's another topic. Um, if, this, if this b squared minus 4ac equals 0, well, you can take the square root of 0, and that would be fine. And if this number would be bigger than 0, then you can also take the square root of that. But if it's negative, it just won't work. Okay, so let's use this to try and look at a question like this, and let's find out Let's use the b squared minus 4ac to find out how many roots this quadratic equation has. Okay, and, and remember a quadratic equation looks like a parabola. And if b squared, here I'm going to actually bring this out right now. Okay, so remember this. If b squared minus 4ac, if we do that right now, and if we get an answer bigger than 0, then there are two real roots, okay? That means two zeros. If b squared minus 4ac equals 0, then there's going to be one real root, or one zero. The parabola will just come down and touch the x-axis and go right back up or down again. Um, the last one, if b squared minus 4ac is negative, if it's less than 0, then there's no real roots at all. Okay, there's no zeros. So let's, let's uh, remember that as we go through this. Now remember, this is A, this is B, and this is C. So really, in this question here, we're going to use those to go B squared. Well, B is negative 6 in this case. It's the um, coefficient in front of x. So we have negative 6 put that in brackets, squared, minus 4, multiplied by a, which the coefficient is 1 here, multiplied by c, which is 3. Okay, and if we were to do that really quick, it would be, well, negative 6 times negative 6 is 36, minus 4 times 1 times 3 is 12. So 36 minus 12, if you did that right now, you would get 36 minus 12 is 24. That answer is bigger than 0, isn't it? So if you look at the three options here, b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. So there will be two real roots, or two zeros. And just to show you this, I did this on Desmos prior to this um, little setup here. I, I did it already. And I'm going to show you what this parabola looks like. Now notice that we're not actually getting we're not actually getting what the roots are or what the zeros are, although you can kind of guess by looking. Um, all we're doing is telling, in this case, that we have two real roots, or we have two zeros. Okay, one there, one there, and indeed this number is 24. That has nothing to do with what the zeros are. It just has to do with how many zeros we have, and there's two. I hope that's making sense. Um, we can move on to the next one, but just remember, if you're given this question and you're supposed to sketch a parabola without actually graphing it, just remember, you can say, yes, there's two real roots. So if you had to sketch it, you'd say, okay, there's two real roots. I don't know where they are because we haven't figured that part out yet. We haven't factored this thing. It's pointing upwards because it's a positive. So we know that it's going to be a parabola that's going to look something like that with two real roots. Okay. Let's try the next one. I'm going to move this over, and let's get my pen back here. So x squared minus 6x plus 9. 
Let's use our b squared minus 4ac, which is called the discriminant. And b is negative 6 once again. So negative 6 squared minus 4 times a. a is 1, and c is 9. I just put brackets to show multiplication. Now that would be like saying 36 minus 4 times 1 times 9, which is 36. If 36 minus 36 is 0, and if you look on our little chart here, if the discriminant is equal to 0, then there's one real root. It means you'll get a parabola that will just come down and touch the x-axis and come right back up again. And if we look at this one, that's exactly what happened when I plugged this into Desmos. Okay, It came down and hit this part right here. Um, sometimes we call this, we say that there is two equal roots. Even though it's just going to be one spot where it's touching, we say that it's two equal roots because it is a quadratic. There is something squared here. It means something times itself. So that's why we sometimes say there's two equal roots. Okay, so remember that because the very last question, which is on the next page, we're going to use that language, two equal roots. See if you can remember that. Okay, I'll move that down. And the last one. I'll erase this. So we have b squared minus 4ac. By now you should have that memorized. That's our discriminant. And remember, this is b right here. Once again, it's negative 6. Minus 4 times a is 1 again. And c, in this case, is 13. Okay, so we have 36 minus Okay, if we went negative 4 times 1 times 13, if you multiplied that out, 4 times 13, that would be 12, 4, that would be 52. So our answer here is going to be negative, okay? 36 minus 52 is going to be a negative answer. And what does a negative answer mean? It means that there are no real roots at all. I'm not sure if your teacher will want you to say what the answer is right here, but the important part that we're talking about in this video is that the answer is negative, and I'm going to bring that up to show you that there are no real roots that happen here. Whoop. It kind of looks like there's roots here, but really that is not the x-axis. The x-axis is right here. I'll draw that again in black. This is the x-axis, and here's the y-axis. Okay, This parabola is way up here. That means you could not factor this thing either. If you tried to factor it, you would not be able to think of two numbers that multiply to 13 and add up to negative 6. It would be impossible. Okay? And if you use the quadratic formula, you would end up with a negative underneath the square root sign. And so that also wouldn't work. It's impossible unless you do something that's, you know, that I talked about earlier. Um, imaginary numbers, which is not part of this particular video. Okay, so let's go to the last question. You may get a question in your math class that looks something like this. Find k so that 4x squared plus kx plus 9 equals 0, so that it has two equal real roots. In other words, so that the parabola is coming down and just touching once and going back up. I don't know if you remember that from the last page, but that's what we're looking for here. So we're looking for a situation where b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. Okay, so b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0 because that would be a situation where there are two equal real roots. That's just like this situation I've just sketched right here. So let's do that. b squared, well, we don't know what the number is in front of the x. It's just k, so we're going to put the k there instead of a number. Minus 4 times a. a happens to be 4 here as well, because a is in front of the x squared. And the c is the 9. And all of that is going to equal 0 in order for us to have this situation. So let's do what we can do. Um, if you were to take a calculator, and if you were to go 4 times 4 times 9, that would be 16 times 9. And if you want to, you can take a calculator really quickly. 16 times 9, you get 144. And it's negative 144. That equals 0. 
And then if we were to bring this 144 over to where the zero is, so we would add 144 to each side. And then the very last step is get rid of this squared sign by taking the square root of both sides, something you should be familiar with, and the answer is 12. So k will equal 12, and we've just answered this question. Find k so that this situation here, if you put 12 right here, we will end up with a situation where the parabola just comes down and touches right here. I'm going to show that um, on this, because I used it on Desmos earlier, and this is the real situation. If k is 12, this is what it would actually look like. Okay, sure enough, the parabola comes down, touches the x-axis, and goes right back up again. And this is called two real roots. There's other variations of this kind of question. It could say, if find k so that this has no equal roots. Well, then we would do this question exactly the same way, except for if it had no equal roots, we would do this question and put instead of the equal sign, we would put a less than zero here. And if, if it said so that it has two different real roots, two different ones, then we'd have instead of a less than sign, we'd put a positive sign there. Anyway, those are some variations on this kind of question that you can get. And uh, hopefully you're comfortable with this fairly quick situation, this fairly quick idea that we use in math called the discriminant. Hopefully that makes sense and you're able to use it to your advantage. Okay, good luck.